Hello, good morning, good day, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world, from wherever you're watching this session, welcome. I'm really happy because this is my second appearance uh, at the Collab 365 community events. And here we meet at the GlobalCon second edition. So I hope that the conference was very satisfying so far, that you learned a lot of cool feature, a lot of cool new information, and that you have watched a lot of well, really interesting sessions. My session is going to be Adaptive Cards, the technology that Microsoft is building, and how you can use it to maximize your business process experience, how you can use them to make the user um, participants, so your employees, even happier and less frustrated because of participating in them. My name is Tomasz Poszczytek, I'm coming from Warsaw in Poland. Um, frankly speaking, I'm working with Microsoft Technologies for over 10 years uh, with Microsoft Technologies, with third-party tools for Microsoft. And so I was also a business analyst for a long time. Today, I'm focusing mainly on business, business applications, business processes. Uh, I'm kind of an expert in this area. And I'm also a business applications MVP, so this most valuable professional the award from Microsoft for the most engaged community experts. If you're interested in what I'm writing, in what I'm working on, simply follow me on my Twitter or look my look look up my, my blog, where I'm posting a lot of content around the projects and around things I find out and solutions I'm working on. Um, another important information is that if you're watching from Poland or maybe the closest neighborhood, then there are cool two new sorry, new, there are upcoming cool um, two community events this year uh, that I'm a proud co-organizer of. The first one is SPS Warsaw is going to take place on 12th of September. It's going to be our fifth anniversary. And the second one is the first edition of 365 Saturday Warsaw, so the conference totally dedicated to Power Platform and Dynamics. And it's going to be held um, on the 3rd of October. And I keep my fingers crossed that the situation by them by then will not develop dramatically and we'll be able to meet in person finally. Well, in case not for some reasons, then uh, all in the end, we'll just meet online. We'll move those events to the virtual world, but they will be cool anyway. So don't worry, they will take place. Okay, the agenda for today is quite short. The first I want just to draw you the story behind adaptive cards, this technology, how it originated, why it originated, and well, who is behind this. Then the message cards, because it's important to understand the legacy of this technology that is now, uh, that is now inherited by the adaptive cards. And lastly, what are the cool features we have in the preview? And what are the cool features that are coming up in the next releases of the adaptive cards? When we look at the modern at the modern social tools, the social pages, those, those portals, or even when we look at the communication applications from Microsoft, we can clearly identify those areas that can be called like an encapsulation of a content. They have borders, they somehow uh, are pulled out from the layout. You just look at them and you know that, hey, this is like a placeholder of something. And so when we look, for example, at this uh, Facebook page, we can say that this post about the video, this is a kind of this card. And that's true because when we take that, when we, when we, when we take it out and we look at the different events, uh, sorry, the different, uh, the different um, applications, we can see that this content is simply moving with us. It's being displayed according to the host UI or the host user experience as well. However, the content itself is unchanged. It's just being displayed uh, as, as we created it, as we wanted, as we authored it. And so when we are talking about the cards, what is the card actually, then we can say that the card is just a way to display the content that we want within the host experience. So the host actually is taking care about the, the colors, the, the font sizes, the font faces, paddings, markings, and all these things that we don't actually need to focus on because this is very related to the host. So when talking about the history of the cards in Microsoft, this all starts around 2016 when Microsoft realizes that it already has a couple of teams working basically on the same technology, but still independently. 
and they had Microsoft Exchange team working on actionable messages, they had Windows team working on live tiles, they had Bot Framework team working on some kind of a technology for, for those cards. And at the same time, their competitors like Slack or Messenger, they already had something like that worked out. So just a year later, the new team was created. Uh, Matt Hittinger and David Klo uh, were put as the leaders of that. And just in the same year, they have announced the first version of the message cards. So the successor of actionable messages from back then. And in just one more year, they have uh, published in June 2018, the Adaptive Cards version 1.0. So this history was really, really uh, rapid. And it just took two years or even less than two years to actually bring us the first very much working concept of Adaptive Cards. Who are those heroes? Who is Matt and David? Matt Hittinger, um, I mean, both, both men are principal program managers at Microsoft. Microsoft, uh, Matt, Matt joined Microsoft uh, just like short time before he, he uh, joined the team. And before he joined Microsoft, he was working as a program, program manager and project manager um, in projects where which aim was to deliver mobile applications for high consumer profile brands. So he learned a lot about the user experience, user interface, and user expectations in general. And in the end, now he's transferring this knowledge to how the adaptive card technology should render those information, how the layout should look like, how to make those adaptive cards really pretty. He's also a very active community member. He's speaking a lot at, uh, he's speaking a lot at user groups, group uh, meetings, and he's also running the Adaptive Cards uh, community call every second Tuesday or Thursday of the month. If you're interested, uh, call him on Twitter and he will certainly respond. The second man is David Klo. David is working for Microsoft for over 15 years already, so it's quite a long time, to be honest. But ever since, he was uh, somehow related to the Exchange team. He created the AWS uh, Manage API. He was working with OWA. Uh, he was working with the Office add-ins for Outlook and Exchange. So he did a lot around Exchange integration with the whole Office 365 ecosystem and other platforms. Now, once he joined Microsoft uh, Adaptive Card team, then he focused again on development. He, for example, created the Adaptive Cards designer, and now he's working closely on merging the actionable messages that we still have in Outlook with the full schema of adaptive cards. So to have really actually just the one technology in the end. Now, what makes the adaptive cards uh, that are built by Microsoft so special? First of all, as I said, they're being natively rendered on any device, on any platform that has the SDK built in. They adopt the host experience, user experience, and they're really, really low cost because when we define the content of the card, we don't actually need to focus on how this card will look like on iOS, Android, web, or, or desktop version. We just need to focus on shaping, crafting the content, and then rest is done by the host. Plus, we design a card using a JSON that has its own schema. If we put anything outside of that schema, it won't be rendered. And therefore, uh, because of this purely declarative code, this technology is very secure and we can't just inject any kind of like malicious code. Moreover, uh, if we want to extend the schema, so if you want to use this um, SDK, Adaptive Cards SDK to our own projects or in our own projects, we can extend the schema. We can put their uh, actions or functions that are not present in the public version. Um, plus, Adaptive Cards is not a technology only created to display information, to show information, but as well to be consumed by the by the users and to provide the feedback. So users can click, hyperlinks can click links to or buttons to open pages. They can in the end fill in the forms and submit them to the host so to provide the feedback. Plus from the day one, this technology is also supporting the, the uh, text to speech applications. So this is even uh, possible to be used. I mean, so, so you can even create parts of an interface using adaptive cards even if you're thinking about um, giving this to the people with kind of disabilities. So this is really, really cool. Short info about the message cards. They were born as the 
actionable messages successor. When you now look at the documentations page of Microsoft Docs, you'll notice there is a huge warning message. This is like obsolete. And if you can then transit to adaptive cards, do it. But message cards have one really irreplaceable technology that is called, and that is called, that is that allows them to be posted to Microsoft Teams via the webhooks. And that's really cool because it opened kind of a, uh, set of functionalities or possibilities that is yet not possible for adaptive cards. So how does the message card look like? Well, it's very simple. It's, it's schema is very uh, strict, it's very fixed. It's built from sections or sections, yes, many, many sections, because if you want to multiply, for example, section text or section facts, you have to create a new section and then put this section text block inside of it. And always below the contents, we have uh, an area for actions where you can submit form, open URL, toggle part of the form, but it's really, really fixed. Okay, let's navigate to adaptive cards because message cards is just uh, the technology of the past and don't focus on it. Adaptive cards were born in June 2018. I mean, they were born earlier, but they were published on June 2018 as uh, a continuator, as a successor of, of, mes of, of message cards because the message card technology was just not um, extendable enough or that flexible enough to be really developed and to be to be worked on the, in the future so the team created adaptive cards now it have um, now it has a lot of more advanced schema has a lot of more functions and and uh, fields and controls and we can today find the adaptive cards SDK in most of the Microsoft 365 communication applications let it be Outlook let it be Teams let it be bot framework and possibly by the end of this year, it's also going to be present in Power Virtual Agents or in the Windows timeline or in Cortana. But that's not it because Adaptive Cards is an SDK that is hosted in uh, on, on a GitHub. It's open source. You can as well grab it and use it in your own applications if you want because the SDK today is available for Android, for iOS, for JavaScript, for Windows, plus by the community, uh, by the community work, they have created as well as SDK for such modern frameworks as Flutter or React Native. Awesome. Adaptive Cards schema is a bit more advanced. What you can see here is now the schema for version 1.0. The difference between 1.0 and version 1.2, that is today the latest available, is that the actions actually don't need to be always at the bottom, so always below the body. We can put a container that is called an action set anywhere on the layout of the adaptive card and then put those controls those actions anywhere in the layout so that's really flexible and it's really cool we have now in adaptive card set of uh, containers like fact set action set uh, column set image set we have uh, a set of, of fields of controls like text block rich text block media image and as well we have uh, the actions that allows us or the inputs that allows us to put text, toggle, uh, radio buttons, checkboxes, date control, and so on and so on. We can do a lot. How to start with adaptive cards? Well, the first, the first and the very easiest way is to go to https.adaptivecards.io and there you can find adaptive cards designer that you can actually start using right away. We also have an app studio in Microsoft Teams that has embedded adaptive cards visualizer there is as well an Adaptive Cards Visualizer for Visual Studio Code. So if you're crafting the Adaptive Card in the Visual Studio, you can uh, just see directly how it looks like, how it's going to look like. Um, we also have WPF Visualizer if you're doing applications for Windows Desktop. And we have a very cool tool that is called Actionable Messages uh, Debugger. So if you're posting them to Outlook and you want to check why they are not working, why they're not displaying, or why the uh, response is not reaching the host, the debugger is right there for you. Let me jump to, let me jump to um, the, sorry, to the um, designer. So this is the designer that is built by the David Lowe. One cool thing that has appeared in designer after the Microsoft Build Conference is this ability to switch from the version that we want to actually build the adaptive card for. That is really helpful because not every functionality, not every feature is available for every version, obviously. 
The designer helps you to create adaptive card using this drag and drop approach. So you can simply drag those controls on a canvas and then using the properties, you have to customize them. You have to just um, set their, their values, their configuration. And then in below, we have a fully working JSON code of an adaptive card that you can simply copy and paste to your application. If you want to start to create a new adaptive card, simply hit the button new card and then you can start from an existing template. Uh, but the cool new feature that is also coming up is the ability to create an adaptive card from an image. So we have the VNEX adaptive cards.io designer. This is a playground for the team where they experiment with cool new features. And here you can find that under the new card, there is a new option called from an image. So you can actually just generate an image. You can draw your adaptive card and then upload here to see how the adaptive card is going to look like. Machine learning behind is now trying to convert this image into adaptive card. For some uh, examples, it's working better. For some worse, I was trying with, with ads from, from Google and that wasn't working really well. But hey, for this example, that worked fine. Now let me just go back to the regular adaptive card designer. Okay, so now it's time to actually to actually start with the demo, right? So let's go to the demo. My first demo is about uh, an application to sh actually send an invoice for approval. Now in regular approach, we would have someone who, for example, uploads the invoice to SharePoint. Then there is a Power Automate that generates a, a, an approval task to an accountancy team. And then someone, have to go, someone has to go to the SharePoint review document, then go to the task, approve a task. So that they would be required or requested to navigate from one system to another. And that would be a little bit frustrative, right? Now, what if we could create a solution that simply post this approval task with all the information they need to actually approve or reject directly to the Microsoft Teams channel where a accountancy team is working, where they share the documents, where they share the communication, where they just collaborate. That will be much, much more efficient and faster. So in this um, solution, in this uh, demo, uh, the general researcher, the employee of mine, uh, he's simply scanning a new invoice. There is an image of the scanned invoice. This is now being uploaded. And I have already um, an AI model trained in the back. This is the AI model trained based on this specific layout of the invoices. And it is able to recognize invoice number, due date, to whom it was issued, what is the total value, and so on and so on. So a couple of information are here um, defined. So once AI Builder finished analyzing this document, we can now see that it has recognized several fields, sometimes with a higher, sometimes with a lower uh, confidence around, around, their, um, you know, around them. But in the end, it is really aware about a lot, of, a lot of fields. So now once I hit the Send for Approval button, there will be a Power Automate trigger that is going to actually generate an adaptive card and it will send it to the accountancy channel in Microsoft Teams where anyone from the team is actually able to review and then approve. So let me check it or try it. All right, it has been sent. And here in my Microsoft Teams, I already have this adaptive card generated where I can actually see all the information I might need to express whether I want to approve this or reject. I also have all the information about the items and the total value. Everything is here. What I could add here could be a button, for example, under the picture that would navigate to the original document so the accountant could actually compare the values. But after all, this actually helps to, to complete. Now, once I hit the proof, this card is going to be replaced with the confirmation card that we as designers using Power Automate, we are not able to actually customize anymore beyond this custom uh, text here. I hope that one day we'll be also able to customize and just create 
a confirmation adaptive card that will replace the original one so that we would be able to stay uh, in this consistent layout. So how does it work? Let me just refresh it. Oh, not this one. All right. So first, when I hit that button sent for approval, uh, that triggers the Power Automate. And all the information that were recognized by AI Builder are sent here as the input parameters. Now, what is going to happen next is that for the table data, because as you saw, there is this table data here, I'm doing a for each run because I want to simply concatenate those items to a final adaptive card code. And once I do this, I'm sending this adaptive card using a new action that is called post an adaptive card to a Teams channel and wait for the response to, well, a Teams channel and wait for the response. Now, what is the benefit of using this new action? Actually, since the new year, since the January, we have two new actions in uh, for Microsoft Teams. The first one is the one you can see right now. The second one is called post an adaptive card to a Teams user and wait for the response. Before these two actions appeared, we were able actually to send an adaptive card to Microsoft Teams. However, if we created a custom form inside that card, we wasn't able to actually grab the response. With these two new actions, uh, they're posting an adaptive card to Teams and allow user to input a data and send as a response. They're waiting like a regular uh, approval task action is waiting, so until 30 days, uh, user is able to provide the feedback. Now, once this card, the response for the card is received, then based on the outcome, a proper email is being sent. How this action looks like? It's very, very simple. What you can, what you have to do is simply set a team and a channel and then paste here a JSON, valid JSON of an adaptive card. And then you can as well, uh, you know, configure whether this card should be replaced once, once submitted with a new card with this confirmation message or not. And that is actually it. That's very simple. How do you like it? I hope you do like it. Now, the second example I want to show you is again uh, an application built for the process that we have in, in a company. This is an application that allows employees to request for holidays uh, approvals. So again, my John researcher employee, he want to request a new, a new day off. Let's say he want to take a holiday tomorrow. Now, once this request is sent, the data is going to be stored in the common data service, and there is going to be and there is a power automate is actually being triggered on the new record in Common Data Service and is doing the whole magic behind. Let me show you how it works and what will happen. Okay, come on, pop up. All right, so there is a new request placed. And now I am John Researcher's manager. So in my chat window, I should already be sent, yes, a new flow, a new, a new card. So this is again an adaptive card with information about the request. I see when user is requesting the request, what, on what days, how many days left does they, uh, do they have? What is the, let's say, uh, justification of this request? So right here I can simply say, okay, I approve or maybe I reject. Now once I hit submit, this card is also going to be replaced with the confirmation message. And as said, we have not much control over how this, how this uh, confirmation message is going to look like. Now, once this information has been sent, the Power Automate behind is doing two things. The first one, the first one is sending the confirmation message to the user that their request has been approved. So this is the information that my request has been approved, approved, plus I can see that my uh, request here changed, and I can see all the information about the approval here as well. But the second thing, the even cooler thing on my, in my opinion, is that it also sends this information about the leave request to 
the Microsoft Teams channel so that anyone from the team can actually see that the John researcher is going on holidays. And there is also an ICS file generator that they can add to their own calendars. So maybe they will be now somehow motivated to talk to John before he goes on holidays to take over his work, or maybe just to be aware that their colleague is going on holidays and he's not going to be available uh, during these days. So this is a complete solution that we can use to request and then somehow um, proceed those, those holiday requests. What is happening actually in the back? Where it is, where it is. So in the back, that was that flow. There are, there is another approach used. So first, the flow is not triggered directly by the Power Automate, but as set by a new record in Common Data Service. And then once it is triggered, the Power Automate is actually trying to get the user's manager so that to know to whom assign a task. And now once this information is acquired, it is assigning a task, a Power Automate task. Now note that one of the outcomes we have in this action is actually a valid adaptive card code. So if I copy it and paste it here, you'll notice this is just a regular adaptive card code. However, because I didn't like it very much and you saw that my adaptive card code was a little bit different, then what I'm doing here is simply crafting a new body of the card and then simply concatenating the header information with the, let's say, footer with the actions information of the original adaptive card and then simply posting it using the uh, action that we already had in Microsoft Teams set of actions called post an adaptive card to a Teams user. Now, this is the only actual way to post this adaptive card to a Teams user if we talk about the approval tasks. So this way we can post and wait until user approves their task. Once this card has been sent, Flow is waiting for an approval. Now, with this approach, we actually give a manager three ways to accomplish this task. First, they can go into Outlook and use actionable message, simply approve or reject directly from the email. Second, they can go into action items, so here, into approvals and complete the task from there. And third, they can use the Microsoft Teams approach, so go to private communication, open the communication with the Teams bot and complete the task from there. So either way they choose, they can just stick to it and complete it in a way they want, the most comfortable way for them. Cool, huh? The last example I have is about a new options, a new actions that are coming to Power Automate. They are still in a preview, as you can see on the URL, and they are used to help you to govern your Microsoft Teams. The actions, the triggers actually are called for a selected message, and the second one is when a user is added to a Teams channel. I want to focus on this one for a selected message because with that you can actually create a custom actions that the user can choose for any message in Microsoft Teams, either in a channel or in a private communication. Hello, load. So this trigger is delivered with a new approach for designing an adaptive card, the built-in designer in Power Automate. So you can see here I have created this uh, small adaptive card that will help user to select an option for their message. So they can report, can, they can delete, they can send, and they can uh, request to send their copy. After they decide what they actually want to do with this, this, with this message, if they report it, then there is a second adaptive card being sent to uh, a Teams administrator. This is an example of a, of a card of an action called send an adaptive card to a Teams user and wait for the response with a, with a request with a task for them to complete. So let me show you how it works. Me as a, as a Teams user, I can say there is this card that I this, this message I want to report. Now, once we hover uh, a message in Microsoft Teams, we can see this ellipsis icon. On click, there is the more action option in menu. And here it should pop up with the with all the flows that are actually available, but maybe this flow is not shared with this user. So let me show you from my perspective. 
So I'll go, go back to cards and let's do it this way. So once I hover, I see a list of all these flows that have been created that have uh, that have uh, this trigger as as a trigger. And note as well that the label here for the option is the name of the flow. So if you if you will be creating your own flows for this purpose, just keep in mind to make those names the much the, as most descriptive as possible and not too long. Once I click it, I can see now this adaptive card that I have created. and submit it. Now on submission, as you saw, me as a manager, sorry, as a, as a uh, Teams admin, I'm going to receive my own card with a request where I can read who sent it, why, what was the author of the original message? Well, it was a Teams bot, so there is no information about that. But there could be more information, more details about that reported message if it was available. Now, me as a Teams admin, I can simply navigate to this message. It is going to be highlighted now in this yellow color, so I can simply see what we are talking about. And then I can just react. I can remove it, I can, I can delete it, I can maybe inform the, the author that, hey, next time just try to be more polite or whatever, and then complete it. All right. And here again, confirmation message is not that pretty. <clears throat> I can do nothing to make it to, to make it more pretty. Okay, okay, okay. So that was it. Now remember that when I was showing you this example of uh, the invoicing approval, I said that hey, it took me a lot of work to actually do this loop to concatenate the information to to craft this card in the end, right? It was, it was kind of a work to be, to be done. Now, what if we had this technology that we could simply design a template of an adaptive card and then provide data to this card and I would be simply like automatically merge and display it? Well, there is this thing called adaptive cards templating. It is built out of three pillars. The first one is adaptive cards templating language that I will, just, that I will be just showcasing you in a while. The second one is adaptive cards service in a second while. And the third one is Adaptive Cards SDK so that you can use the templating benefits, the goodies in your own custom application. Now, what is templating? That is a new technology, that is a new part of technology uh, in Adaptive Cards that simply helps us to simplify development of our workflows to uh, build templates for Adaptive Cards to disconnect the data, the fixed data from the layout and to help us work even less. Now. When we look at adaptive card today, we have all the data merged with the layout. And this is an example of an adaptive card that shows uh, information about the stock message. Now, what if we simply replace those information, we remove the information out of an adaptive card into a separate JSON and leave inside an adaptive card simply the placeholders. So these are the placeholders, these are the variables that are going to be merged by the adaptive cards templating at the renderation time into the same adaptive card as you saw before. Plus in adaptive card, we also have the expressions uh, in, the, in the templating language, we also have the expressions. So we don't only need to, we, we don't only have to just create a simple placeholder that is going to be replaced with a text value. We can make it more dynamic. So with those set, we can use the conditional uh, rules, we can use the formatting, we can use loops, we can use um, some sort of, 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 of conversions, a lot of, a lot of expressions that we can just put into adaptive card. Plus, with adaptive card language, we are introduced as well with the scopes. The first the default one is a data scope. So what kind of data we want to bind with the specific placeholders inside the card? but we will also be given a device scope. The device scope will help us to get information about the host that is displaying a card. For example, the operation system, the browser version, uh, the device name. So we will be able even to create adaptive cards that display differently on iOS and on Android. For example, they show the related logo and so on and so on. And that's really cool. Now, do you imagine, do you remember this, uh, this, this code? 
the adaptive card that I have that I have sent you uh, that, that I have present you uh, around the template. The sorry, I've, I've lost uh, the, the the thread. So the adaptive card I have created for the invoice approval. That was it, right? But instead of those placeholders that you can see right now, I just had fixed information taken from the Power Automate, from the Power Automate outcomes. Now, with this adaptive card language, I can actually put the placeholders, I can provide the data, and then once the card is being rendered, all these information are going to be replaced with actual data. For example, here I had this table of items. That was the most, uh, I spent the most time on doing this part of my Power Automate. With the language, if it was fully supported by Microsoft Teams, but it's not yet, I would be simply able to provide a data in a table format, like here, this one, and the Power and the Adaptive Heart language would simply uh, multiply this row as many times as many rows I have in my table. Cool. I wouldn't be really need. I wouldn't be really really um, required to create this loop to do it my, myself manually. Awesome. Plus, for example, we have uh, those rules, those conditions. So, for example, this label is only going to be shown if the total value is going to be above five thousand. There is also a rule, an inline rule or condition for this total value here. Sorry, the, the amount here, so that. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here. So that if the amount in that specific row is above $1,000, then it should be displayed in a red color, otherwise in green. And with that, we can really create easily and very fast adaptive cards. And this is just working. Let me show you. Once I switch from the designer mode into preview mode, you'll notice the same card as you just saw before in my demo. That I'm and everything was just generated. I didn't have to create a loop. I didn't have to create anything apart from delivering a proper data. Then, for example, now if I change this total value from 6,000, I just maybe remove the six, you can see that this label has disappeared because it doesn't match or doesn't meet the condition anymore. Awesome and very, very easy. Now, the second thing I wanted to show you is the adaptive card templating service. The service is working using LUIS, so the language understanding intelligence service, to check a GitHub repository of the templates if there is any template already present. And then if there is a template, it simply grabs it, merges with the data and displays. So for example, in the graph explorer, if I go to, for example, the my profile data, there is a JSON, and then there is a new tab called adaptive cards and I'll open it. Now this is calling the adaptive card templating service that is checking the GitHub and when the template is found, it simply displays it. Now, one of the upcoming functionalities, uh, upcoming features that we're going to have in adaptive cards is the adaptive cards authoring service. This is going to be um, a software actually that we can download from GitHub and install in our premises that brings to the company a space for a collaboration over the adaptive cards. So then we can have a team of designers who are working on adaptive cards templates. This is also coming with the Power Automate connector so that in the end, if someone is going to create a flow and they want to display an adaptive card, they would simply use this connector, this new action to say, okay, I want to use this template with this data and that's it. So this is what the adaptive card templating service is all about. Okay, I'm going now back to I'm going now back to to the presentation. Okay. With that said, um, I'm just slowly recap doing the recap of the whole presentation. So the information that is really important here is that we are currently currently working on the version 1.2. Actually, this is the version that is that, that, that is the latest released version. And the team is working now on the version 1.3 and in the same time on the versions under the vnext code name. So that's kind of like a sandbox for them. One of the coolest information, the features or the functionalities that were released with the version 1.1 and 
was for example the media support so the ability to play video and music directly from the card without the need to navigate away also the base 64 support so that we would be able to actually embed uh, an image uh, well the base 64 string of an image inside the code of an active card to display it instead of putting this image on imgur or azure blob storage or share sharepoint or whatever else to display it so that's really cool uh, we also are going to have uh, we also have those inline actions so that the ability to put actions anywhere inside the inside the code and also a very basic data validation with version 1.3 will be uh, introduced the universal HTTP action, uh, also the RVD, so the responsive web design, and some cool new features as well. Let me just show you the, the roadmap. So somewhere this year, we will have the maybe preview release of a templating service for JavaScript and .NET. And in the next years, what we will have, what we will be given is this unified HTTP action. So today, if you want to use a submit or get or uh, I mean, yeah, the post or get actions or toggle action, this is like you have to use three different actions. Having this new unified action controller called the action execute will simply give you the same experience, whichever action you actually want to create. And hopefully this will also unify actionable messages with adaptive cards because this is where the major difference actually exists on how the actionable message is calling the host. If you're interested in what Microsoft uh, Adaptive Card team is working on, then simply navigate to this URL, so ak.ms slash adaptive cards roadmap, and you will land here in the product board website where you can see what are the features that the team is working on, how they will possibly look like, how would they possibly work, and if you have your own stunning idea, your own improvement idea, simply hit the button to submit it. Once it is reviewed and it passes the validation, it will be added here to the, to the pipeline. Also, there is the second, let's say, bucket of the items and other considerations. So these are the functionalities, these are the features that the team has somewhere in the back of their heads, but this is not in the mainstream of uh, of, the, of, the, of the work, so they're really not focusing on this right now. Okay, 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 where are my slides? Where are my slides? Here. Very well, so if you're interested in learning more about adaptive cards, if you would like to find out some other cool scenarios, if you would like to maybe check if what you are thinking of is feasible with adaptive cards, don't hesitate to contact me. I will gladly help you. I will gladly share my knowledge with you. Simply use one of the existing channels, email, Twitter, YouTube. Oh, by the way, on YouTube, I have a lot of videos about the adaptive card. So if you're interested about uh, different demos, about the different solutions, then yeah, look, look, look up the, the, the videos there. Subscribe, of course. And uh, yeah, you can leave me a comment as well if you want. With that said, I would like to thank you very, very much for you being present during my, uh, my session, for watching it. I hope you learned something new. I hope you got inspired. I hope you now have a lot of ideas on how you can actually use adaptive cards within your processes to make them even more effective. And I wish you a pleasant rest of the conference. I wish you to watch and to participate in a lot of more sessions where you can learn as well more content and more information thank you very much once again and see you soon hopefully in person and one of the upcoming events oh and one last information if you'd like to watch this session again if you'd like to uh, even get the all um, an access to the ebooks that have been published across uh, around the topics that were discussed today then simply use uh, use this uh, all access pass today uh, to purchase and access to everything that the Collaptrix 5 team is working on and producing just for you. Thank you very much again. Bye.